In the previous video, we considered non-void functions that took a single argument or input parameter and returned a single value. Now we want to consider functions that have multiple arguments and they can return multiple values. Technically, they return a single thing, a tuple, but that tuple can contain multiple values. So effectively, it's as if it's returning multiple values. And we'll see that in a bit. But let's start by considering a function that you might see in math class or an engineering class that has two arguments. Let's say x and y. This function, maybe we'll call it g. And it is equal to x plus 1 times the quantity y plus 2. How do we implement that in Python? Well, it, it's very simple to have multiple arguments. We create a function using the keyword def, D-E-F, give a function name or identifier. Let's just stick with G. Then we list as comma separated values all the arguments to the function. And we just have to have unique identifiers for each argument. And let's stick with x and y. That's it. We'll close the parentheses, put a colon, and that's the complete header for this function. The body of this function, we can get away with a single return statement. So let's return the quantity x plus 1 times the quantity y plus 2. Hitting return twice, we get the interactive prompt back, and let's see if this worked. Let's invoke the function with actual arguments, 0 and 1. When we hit return, we get the return value of 3. The actual arguments of 0 and 1 were assigned to the formal parameters x and y, respectively. So x became 0, so that first quantity of x plus 1 just became 1, and that was multiplied by y plus 2, and since y was 1, that became 3. So sure enough, it looks like this is working properly, since we have a return value of 3. If we want to have a function that has three arguments, then in that header line, we just put three formal parameters within parentheses, give them all unique identifiers. If we want 4 or 5 or 6, we just have that many formal parameters in there. In fact, Python allows us to have an arbitrary number of arguments. We could do this with our own functions, similarly to how it's done with the print function. So the print function we've seen can have varying numbers of arguments, but we won't get into that here. Instead, let's turn our attention to having multiple return values. We've seen a built-in function that has multiple return values. The divmod function gave us back two things. So let's call that with an argument of 7 and 2. So this took two arguments and returned two things. And this gave us as the first result, the floor division of 7 divided by 2, so 2 goes into 7 evenly three times with a remainder of 1. Now again, technically this is returning one thing, but we can use simultaneous assignment to get each of these return values. So for example, if we said x comma y is equal to div mod of 7 comma 2, then at this point x is 3 and y is 1. So effectively we got back two things. Now we can write functions of our own that return multiple values. And let's try and duplicate the functionality of this built-in function. So let's define a function. We'll call it my div mod and it takes two arguments. Let's call them n and d maybe for numerator and denominator. And in this case all we have to do is list multiple expressions within the return statement. So we could return the floor division, n divided by d, and then also the modulo operation, n mod d, and then hit return twice. Now that function is defined, and let's put it to the test. Let's call my div mod with an argument of 7 and 2 and it works just like the built-in function. Although, when built-in functions are available for you, 
you should stick with those. They've generally been optimized in some way or going to perform better than what you're going to be able to come up with easily on your own. With all that being said, let's stop here and in the next video we'll consider void functions.